Today on this 2010 Nissan Frontier, we're going to review and install the Takancha Praji P3 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90195. And to help us with our install of our brake controller, we'll be using part number 5506. Alright, this is what the P3 brake controller looks like when it's installed in our Nissan. We have three settings here that correspond to the size trailer or how much weight you're pulling behind your truck. B1 for a small conventional truck and trailer. We hit this button here. We get a boost level two. And you see how the icon changes to like a little fifth wheel. Boost level three. And it turns into a really big uh, fifth wheel or gooseneck trailer. And then actually, one more time, it turns the boost off. And you got a typical small truck with a small trailer. All right, with boost setting, all the brakes come on a little bit before the truck brakes come on. And it gives you a feeling of the trailer brakes working first. It works for a very short time and then it works back to its inertia activation. So when you let off the brakes, the brake controller will let off the brakes at the same time. We also have a up and down arrow to help set our power. Now your initial setup, it's a good idea to set it about six or seven, then adjust it from there to whatever your trailer requires. And at any time, if you ever need to activate trailer brakes by themselves, all you gotta do is move this manual override right here. Move it over full power right here. Next we'll go ahead and show you how we install this brake controller. We'll go ahead and start with our part number 5506 first, our wiring kit. We'll work with this and then work up to our brake controller. Let's go ahead and cover the parts that come with that. We got 25 foot of cable right here which is uh, 10 gauge material with two uh, wires inside the sheath. We got a variety of ring terminals here to connect up to your battery and also a ring terminals to connect up to the included circuit breakers. Now the circuit breakers you have are going to be 20, 30, and 40 amp. And pretty much in every situation you're going to use this kit on, you're only going to use two or three. It depends on which amperage circuit breaker you need for your particular brake controller. It also includes four uh, butt connectors to help hook up your wires. Now to give you an idea of what we're working with on our truck, our truck is already ha has a seven pole connector wired up to it for just uh, lights alone. Uh, so we have our extra wires coming out from here so we can hook up the rest of our wire harness too. Now this one has a, a blue wire and a black wire. Blue wire is going to be used for output from a brake controller, and our black wire will be used for a 12 volt power supply going out to our trailer. Now on this type style of connector, it makes everything pretty easy to connect to and convenient. However, if you have a different style of connector, it's the same principle applies. Still look for the blue for your trailer brake output and black for your 12 volt power supply. We'll go ahead and remove the sheath on our two wires here. to get access to our wires. Okay, one note, of course this is not gonna be exact color match. We're still gonna run ours black to black and then white to blue. Let's just go ahead and strip back our wires and get them ready to install. Now let's get our other wires ready. Now the buck connectors, the inside has been sitting out and crow it up a little bit. So we're going to use some of the new buck connectors that come with the kit. Now I'm going to use some electrical tape to help protect our connections here. Now we'll go ahead and run our gray cable to the front of the vehicle. Just make sure you stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust. What we did in this case is we ran our wire up alongside the frame over the hitch and up and over the top of the frame. And we'll zip tie it to help keep it up and out of the way. We went over these components and lines and hoses, just went over top of it, ran it down alongside the frame. There's a space between the frame and the gas tank. We just kind of stuck it between there, over the brackets for the gas tank. Again, followed the frames at time where we could. There happened to be a little bit of an opening right here that we was able to run our cable through. So it held it up for us. And then we ran it up towards the engine compartment. There's a little heat shield right here that was able to sneak our cable through and hide it up. And once we pull it from the top, It'll take up all our slack and it'll be hidden on the inside. None of our parts come with any zip ties like we're using here today, but you can use part number DW05726-25. With our Nissan here, it's pretty easy to push the wire up from the bottom and up into an opening right here so we can easily reach it. 
if it was a little bit harder to get to, you could use a pull wire. Basically, you would use any type of material. We use an old piece of airline tubing, but a coat hanger or any piece of material that you can manipulate. Push down here and tie off and pull back up. We'll go ahead and pull up the slack. Make sure it's not uh, interfering with anything on the engine. And then we'll go ahead and use another zip tie to help hold it in place. We're just going to tie off to the vacuum line right here. Cut off the excess. Next, we'll go ahead and run our wire out to our power supply, which will be our battery. So let's go ahead and see how much length we need. We'll follow the existing wire, wire harness. We'll go up to the positive side of our battery. Next, we'll go ahead and find a location to install our circuit breakers. To help us with our installation, we're going to attach them using some self-tapping screws. We'll be using part number 10113-1802. Now, when you install your circuit breakers, it's a good idea to be as close to your power supply as possible. In this case, we're going to use a sheet metal right here. Now we're always going to use a 40 amp circuit breaker for a 12 volt power supply for our trailer. And in this case for our brake controller, we're going to use a 30 amp circuit breaker. To install screws, we're using a quarter inch nut driver. Okay, and we'll just overlap the two mounting tabs and use one screw to hold everything together. With our circuit breakers mounted, now we have a better idea where we're going to run our wires to for, through those and through our battery here. And we'll go ahead and cut off our excess. Next, we'll go ahead and take a moment to split the wires apart because we'll go pretty far back on our wires and split them. Okay, let's just go ahead and put a white wire off to the side. Eventually, that'll go inside the vehicle. All right, so let's go ahead and work with our black wire. Now, this 12, now our 12-volt wire is gonna go through our 40-amp circuit breaker, breaker, which is located right here. Pretty simple to install. We'll go ahead and cut the wire in half, strip them back, and we'll install a couple of the small ring terminals. Now, our circuit breakers are actually labeled. This copper one is labeled BAT, so for it goes to the wire, it goes to the battery. And then the silver one is labeled AUX. So going to our battery, we'll go ahead and take our black wire, put it into place, and loosely install the hardware. Then our wire going out to eventually our trailer will go on top. We can go ahead and slug those down using a 3.8 deep well socket. Now we'll get, take our other end of our wire and we'll go ahead and get it stripped back. And we're going to attach one of the large ring terminals to it. This will eventually connect to the battery in this location right here. Okay. I like to leave the connection to the batteries one of the last things that I do, so I'll just leave this off to the side. Next up is to go ahead and use a leftover length of wire and use that to run between our brake controller from the inside and out to our power supply once again. This will provide our ground and our power for the brake controller. However, of course, whatever we have left over is way too short for the job, so we'll have to use some additional wire. This will happen in situations where your battery is located on the passenger side of the vehicle. So the extra wire we're going to be using is part number 10-2-1. This is a DECA 2-wire 10 gauge brake wire. Okay, now we've got an extra length of wire here. We're going to have about maybe a 10 foot chunk and we're going to combine it with our white wire here that's separate and we're going to run that through a grommet to the inside of the vehicle. The grommet's going to be located in this corner right here. So we'll make a slit into that using a utility knife or actually a pocket knife works really good in this application and just make a slit in there just enough where we can run our wires through. Just make sure we stay away from the wires on the side. I'm going to bundle my three wires together temporarily with some electric tape and we'll push it on through. So I'll go ahead and push it in. Chances are it's going to be hidden behind the insulation a little bit on the inside of the vehicle. We'll go ahead and take our new cable here and follow the path of our original black cable. And we'll go ahead and see how much wire we need going from the circuit breakers and to our battery. This time we'll also need to accommodate for going to our positive side of our battery and also our ground or negative side of the battery. 
we'll go ahead and cut off our excess one more time. We'll also take a few moments to go ahead and separate our wires, give it some working room. We'll also separate a small section here to get access to our black wire. So now let's go ahead and cut this black wire in half and we'll connect it up to our 30 amp circuit breaker just like we did with our other wires. We'll go ahead and take two more small ring terminals and add it to our wires. Our one wire is going to our battery, we'll go to the copper side. And our brake controller will go to the silver side of a circuit breaker. We'll cut our black wire off short so we don't need all that length and add our large ring terminal. We'll also do that to the white wire as well, but we'll leave it at its original length. Once again, I'm gonna leave my connections to my batteries as the last thing I do, so let's tuck them out of the side for now. Now, we'll go ahead and take a moment to zip tie our wires up and bundle them up and keep them safe and secure and out of the way from the engine. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them off even and strip back the wires. All right, now let's get our wires for our brake controller out. This is, this is the wires that do come with the P3 brake controller. We'll go ahead and loosen them up. And we'll use the supply buck connectors that do come with the brake controller. Put the wire back and add our buck connectors. All right, now the brake controller comes with two smaller buck connectors, which isn't gonna be enough for a white one. But a wiring kit does come with an extra butt connector we can use for that purpose. Let's do our easy ones, black to black. White to white. And then our single white wire will connect up to our blue wire. Now we have a single wire remaining, which is our red wire. This will connect up to the cold side of brake switch. So when you hit your brake pedal, that turns on the brake lights. And that's the circuit you want, so that will turn on our brake controller when it's needed. Now to tap onto our brake signal on our truck, we're going to use a quick splice wire connector. We'll be using part number 564. Now on our Nissan, we're gonna tap into the wire right behind one of the brake switches here. Follow our brake pedal up. We found out this yellow wire here is our brake signal. So when we press the brake pedal, it gets hot. To use a quick splice connector, it's pretty simple. Just connect it over the wire that you want to use. And then the wire you want to tap into or add to it, you slide next to it. So it's gonna be pretty tight up in there. So give me a moment, I'll have this hooked up and you can see what we did. All right, now you can see here with my quick splice in place and my red wire sitting next to my yellow wire here and our quick splice doing the job. Now we'll go ahead and find a place for our brake controller. Rules are pretty simple. Basically you just want to make sure you have it in an easy accessible area so you can manually activate it if you need it in an emergency situation. Make sure it's in a straight line with the vehicle and as little twist left to right as possible. You can install it up or down you get 360 degrees rotation to install it. So if you want to, you can install it this way, vertical, and look down on it if it worked out better for you. In this case, I think we're going to use this location right here so it's easily accessible. A mounting bracket consists of two pieces. We have this piece right here that gets bolted to the truck, and then we have the secondary bracket that attaches to this one with some screws, and that holds the brake controller in place. This also allows you to remove the brake controller easily if you want to transfer between different vehicles. If you want a permanent setup, you could also use this included metal bracket as well. Let's go ahead and put our small bracket in place. We'll need a Phillips bit screwdriver. 
to run the screws in. And always double check to make sure there's nothing behind it before you run the screws in. Make sure it's straight where we want it, and then we'll install the second screw. We'll go ahead and use the machine screws that are also included with the brake controller as the rest of this hardware. Let's push it in. Using a Phillips screwdriver, we'll install the machine screws. And this will cut their own threads into the plastic bracket. And by the way, you can also use the screws that we used for circuit breakers will work in the same place as well. Smaller stubby screwdriver works in a tight situation like this. Let's go ahead and take our wire harness, plug it into the back of the brake controller until it clicks. And then these corners right here will go into the corners of the bracket and we'll snap into place. Next, we'll go ahead and take a few moments and zip tie our wires. And once again, make sure we're safe and secure and don't interfere with working with the pedals. I'm gonna use a small piece of loom material here to help hide the color of the wires. And you can also use electric tape to accomplish the same thing. Back underneath the hood, we'll go ahead and hook up our wires. Let's start with the positive side first. We'll loosen up this nut using a 12 millimeter socket. We'll put our two ring terminals on there and replace the nut. And we'll go over to our negative side of our battery and we'll use a 10 millimeter socket for that side. Let's go back to our brake controller and we got the screen lit up so that shows us we got power. At this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and plug up a trailer and try it out. With our trailer hooked up, we can see the display changes and it shows a small icon of a truck and trailer. So it tells us we got good connection to our trailer brakes and all you gotta do now is take it on a couple of test drives and adjust the brake controller to your liking. And now I'll finish it for a Takancha Prodigy P3 trailer brake controller, part number 90195 on this 2010 Nissan Frontier. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.